Lord, may your grace and peace be ours in abundance this morning as we celebrate the lives and accomplishments of these young men, soon to be graduates of this great college. This morning we praise you, we listen to your word, and we pray for them as they finish this part of their journey and begin new adventures. As generations of Wabash men have done, this morning we bring our full hearts and our aspirations to the almighty creator who made us and loves us. We turn to you in prayer. The psalmist called to you, Lord, and named you both sun and shield. We thank you for protecting and guiding these young men during their four years on this campus, each known and loved by you. God created all people in the image of the divine. In the image of God, we were made by God's own hand. We recognize those assembled as your children, bearing your image, their compassion, and their creativity mark them as men of God, sharing their creator's likeness. The philosopher reminds us that, there, that for everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. We thank you that you have brought us to this day of rejoicing, a day to remember their ringing in, their joys and sorrows, accomplishments and challenges along the way, a day to pause and look both to the past and to the future. The Lord promises that no good thing will be withheld from those who walk with integrity. We know that you have great things in store for each of them. We cannot imagine their futures, but we are confident in your ability to use every gift in your own time and for the purposes of your kingdom as they continue their life's journey, holding fast to honor, truthfulness, and righteousness. Let this baccalaureate remind us of your strength, O God, in bringing your people through trial and difficulty. Let it be a sign of your eternal goodness and our unending gratitude. The psalmist proclaims that happy are the people whose strength is in the Lord, whose hearts are set on the pilgrim's way. The class of 2017 sets out this day on a great pilgrimage as they bid these sacred portals farewell. From this day forward, loving God, we ask that you strengthen each one here to follow you in whatever path may best serve you. Guide these men as they seek to find their lives by losing them in you and ever remind them that here on this campus, a homecoming fire will brightly flame, always ready to welcome them home and remind them of their great brotherhood. Keep them worthy, merciful and gracious God. Hear our prayers for these your sons and may this time of remembrance be a blessing to each one here parents, friends, and professors. All this we pray in the name of the Lord, our hope and salvation. Amen. Our scripture reading for today comes from the book of Luke, chapter four, verses 14 through 22. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of the sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free to, pro to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, 
and sat down, the eyes of all the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, is not this Joseph's son?
Let us pray. Almighty God, on this commencement Sunday, our hearts are filled with thanksgiving and joy. We thank you for all that we have and for all that you enable us to be and to do. To you belong all glory and praise. We give thanks, O Lord, for the gift of human freedom, in which begin responsibility, courage, justice, mercy, and the duty to love our neighbors by caring for the sick, feeding the hungry, sheltering the homeless, and comforting the incarcerated. We give thanks for our country, for its intricate networks of human interaction in which we participate and seek our well-being, for the rights and liberties that our ancestors came here to establish and enjoy, and for the hard-won traditions of inclusiveness and toleration. We know that democracy is not easy, and that responsible citizenship and the kindred duty of neighbor love are essential to its preservation. We pray for our leaders that they might have the wisdom, courage, and greatness of spirit that leadership demands, especially in these uncertain times. We pray that they will be peacemakers, both at home and abroad. We pray that partisanship might be leavened by cooperation and that we, might, that we might find solutions to the problems that beset us. We pray for educational institutions, including this college, that all good learning, thinking, inquiry, and discernment might flourish and abound. We pray for teachers here and everywhere. We pray for the young men who will graduate today. In them rest our fondest hopes for the future of our country. We pray that they will fight the good fight, that they will finish the race, and that they will be good men. But let them and let us remember that we are not the measure of all things. Human capacities are limited. We cannot foresee, much less control, the consequences of our actions. We cannot do anything important entirely by ourselves. We, t we depend upon the good things that others do for us. We know, O oh Lord, that we are dependent upon you, upon the power and powers that bear down on us and sustain us, that govern us and redeem us, that instill in us a sense of possibility and hope, and that point us in the right direction. We pray, O oh Lord, that your will be done, and that you be thou our vision, our guide, and our light. Amen.
and President Hess for the very kind invitation to preach here today on this great day of celebration. Thank you. For the distinguished faculty and staff and trustees of Wabash College, to the fathers and mothers of our graduates on this day set aside when we give thanks to God for the women in our lives who have nurtured and formed and raised and loved us every day of the year. To the siblings of our graduates who are here in support of their brother and to the graduates of the class of 2017 on this, the 179th Wabash College commencement, welcome. And friends, would you pray with me Holy God, on this day of commencement for the graduating class of Wabash College 2017, we gather for worship, giving thanks to you for these graduates and their families and their professors and this college. Bless them all, Lord Jesus. And now by the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart, be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, I come among you friends on this fine day of celebration as somewhat of a stranger to you. For the vast majority of you, you I haven't yet had the privilege of being introduced, but I'm not a total stranger to the college. You see, I've heard quite a few stories about you, gentlemen of the class of 2017. I've seen photographs on occasion in which you get dressed up. Homecoming, for example, comes to mind. <laughs> gentlemen riding on a float in all sorts of garb. It was awesome. I've gotten to know a few of you students and many alums from my work here at the college with the Wabash Pastoral Leadership Program, my office being over in Trippett Hall. Two, I serve as a consultant for Lilly Endowment and the Religion Division, and there I'm surrounded by Wabash grads. And so because of the deep gratitude and profound thanks I have for this institution of learning. I am deeply honored to be invited here today to worship with you to preach the good news of Jesus Christ crucified and risen. And I have to tell you, dear friends, I love being on a college campus on commencement day. I look at these graduates, I see the utter relief in their eyes, right? <laughs> I see the extraordinary pride in the eyes of the moms and the dads and the grandmas and grandpas, so proud of the men that are gathered here in this place. What a day it is. Reminds me of the words of the psalmist, Psalm 118. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will be glad in it. And I think the psalmist is reminding us in those words that this day that we have been given, it's not a dress rehearsal for another day yet to live. This is the day. And what will we make of this one wild, wonderful life and day that has been given to us? How will we live it? What impact will we have on others? What song will we sing? What life will we live? And graduates of the class of 2017, you were given life at such an extraordinary time in our nation's history. You were but toddlers when we entered a new millennium. You were young when the world experienced 9-11. The communication revolution has been happening all around you at lightning speed as you've grown into the fine, respectful men that you are. And then you spent four years at Wabash College learning to think critically and act responsibly and lead effectively and live humanely. And you met extraordinary people along the way, graduates. You met each other. You met your professors. You heard amazing guest lecturers at the college. And these four years have profoundly shaped you and your stories in ways that you will deeply, deeply appreciate as you live into the story of your life. Speaking of story, as followers of Jesus, we have a basic story that grounds us and undergirds this day and our lives, a story that inspires, a story that brings form to how we see the world, how we see each other, how we envision our future. 
And this story informs what we do with this beautiful thing given to us called life. And the Christian story begins with a God who is not some ineffable, far-off being that is out of reach and beyond. No, God said, I want to be with them. I want them to know me. I want to live with them. I want to do life with them. I want to be in relationship with my people. And so God says, I know. I will become fully human. I'll be born of a woman. I will call her mother. And because of this mother, I will be protected and loved and learn to walk and talk and live and give thanks. And thank you, mothers, for the beautiful gift of life and story that you have given your sons this day. And Jesus grows up, claims his calling like your sons have grown up and are claiming their vocational calling. And Jesus says in the gospel lesson for today that Dr. Hess read, this will be my mission on earth, Jesus says. I will proclaim good news to the poor. I will proclaim freedom for the captives. I will recover sight to the blind. I will help the oppressed go free. And I will proclaim the year of Jubilee. And Jesus says these things in Luke 4 after he's been baptized by John in the River Jordan, after he's been tempted 40 days and 40 nights. He's drawing on the beautiful Jewish teaching of the prophet Isaiah that he has heard all of his childhood, that his mother made sure he heard, I imagine. And in this portion of scripture, he's reading from a scroll in the Jewish synagogue. And when he finishes, and graduates of the class of 2017, this is where you come into the story. Jesus gives the scroll to the attendant and says, and this is to be right now. In other words, Jesus says, this is to be our work now as disciples of Jesus and moving forward from today. And graduates, the very good news is that this is exactly what a liberal arts education has prepared you to do for opening yourselves to that kind of life, that kind of learning, that kind of reaching, that kind of connecting, that kind of tending to the well-being of your community. The most important thing for you to have learned here at Wabash College is that far from ending with your diplomas received today, your education, and the service to others that is its greatest purpose has just begun to seek after things larger than yourself, to reach beyond what you do for yourselves to what you do in service to others. If any class can do that, it is yours, and the world has never needed you more. I say this because we live in a time which is very complex, very rapidly changing, it will call forth the best gifts that you have to offer this world. Having entered into God's great big story by virtue of your baptisms, and if that weren't enough, having received a Wabash College education, you are now prepared, men of the class of 2017. You are prepared to lean into the big questions before us as a world like how do we keep American democracy going when so much angry rhetoric and contempt divides one from another? And those divisions make us so much poorer as a country. Proclaim good news to the poor, Jesus says. Social media is so central to your generation, to your identity. You never knew a time without it. I want you to know, Wabash grads, I graduated from Davidson College in the early 90s. We didn't even have email at that time, I'm just saying. Facebook, not even a thing, right, if you can imagine. But it's interesting to me that as we connect with one another on social media, we do it entirely alone, virtually connected, but interpersonally isolated. You will be prepared by virtue of your Wabash College education to wrestle with how we will redefine the values that will bring us together as a society so we are not held captive by isolation and loneliness. Proclaim freedom for the captives, Jesus says. 
You are prepared by virtue of your education to encourage each other to see the complexities and the diversity in the communities around us and not be paralyzed by the complexity of fear of the other. Let me tell you, friends, we live in a community, in a world where most people live by choosing not to see what they don't understand. Well, I don't see that Americans are incarcerating young people more than any other industrialized nation. I don't see that we have an enormous problem with human trafficking in our world. I don't see on and on and on we choose not to see. We choose to remain blind to that which is so complex and paralyzing. Recover sight to the blind, Jesus says. You're graduating at a time where the world will call forth the best gifts that you have to share. And the good news is you are prepared by virtue of your Wabash College education. Hold that in your minds for a moment while I tell you the story. I had the utter privilege of hearing Reverend Dr. Otis Moss preach in Atlanta, Georgia several weeks ago. He's an African-American preacher in the eighth decade of his life. He labored with Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King in the civil rights struggle from the 1960s to the present. He still preaches, he still teaches, pastors a church in Cleveland. And he told this story that I'll never forget because in it is something so profound that I believe speaks to what is needed today. I'll share his story with you and it, it pertains to music. He spoke of a time that he and his colleagues in the struggle were thrown into jail at one point in the 1960s. The other prisoners in the jail were aware by, by the grapevine of communication that, that happened that Dr. Moss and his colleagues and freedom fighters would be arriving at the particular jail on a particular day. And so the other prisoners couldn't, of course, see Dr. Moss and the freedom fighters arriving, but they knew that he would arrive at the jail at some point that day. And so they decided that throughout the day they would fill the jail with songs of the civil rights movement, fill the jail with sounds of the songs of freedom and liberation and release for the captives, because no matter what time Dr. Moss and the other civil rights uh, leaders were going to arrive, they wanted the jail filled and the hallways and the corridors with the transcendent gift of music and song and melody and harmony, because they knew something profound that melody and harmony and song have the ability to transcend the current time and place and in some mysterious way offer fortitude and sustenance and hope for difficult times and difficult journeys. As Victor Hugo said, music expresses that which cannot be put into words and that which cannot remain silent. Music is that link between heaven and earth, that song, that signpost of the kingdom of God on earth, an inbreaking of the reign of God, which is tangible and felt and heard and experienced deep in our souls. Our Indiana native Kurt Vonnegut once wrote, if I should ever die, God forbid, let this be on my epitaph. The only proof he needed for the existence of God was music, the gift of melody, and harmony, and song. It matters to the human spirit always, but especially so in unharmonious, cacophonous, difficult times. Frankly, I think that is why armies have bands. That's why colleges have fight songs. It's also why liberal arts colleges like Wabash College insist on a curriculum with music theory and art appreciation and religious tradition teaching because those subjects matter so deeply to the human experience, to being whole in a world that can so easily fracture us. Dr. Moss said another really interesting thing. It was about the Black Lives Matter movement, a brilliant, necessary social movement in this generation. But Dr. Moss said it lacks the unity and force to change society, in his opinion, he said, because there is no existing song connected to the movement. 
no harmony, no melody to lift the spirit above the present unharmony. I mention that because Dr. Nelson and I, with the support of our colleague Rachel Hassler, we host a trip every other year to South Africa for the talented young pastors of the Wabash Pastoral Leadership Program. And although music may not be the first critical component that you may think of of the anti-apartheid movement in the 1990s in South Africa, it played a key role in driving change in creating unity for the people of South Africa following the horrid apartheid years. The presence of music in the apartheid era allowed for the mixing of cultures, the creation of unity. The presence of music served as a key player in driving the anti-apartheid movement to great success. All those things I mention, graduates, to make me wonder on your graduation day, as you stand on the precipice of your future in this complex and fractured yet exquisitely beautiful world, will you join the thought leaders in writing new harmony for this unharmonious time? Will you unleash creativity and write new music that has yet to be written to listen deeply to the other to create new rhythms for the global reality in which we are so blessed to be living now? Can new songs emerge from you to help us all discover the commonality of the human condition, which is already present in and amongst everyone, but yearns to be set free more wholly? Will your generation compose this music and then offer the global world new songs which speak to and include men and women, black, brown, and white, gay and straight, rich and poor, Western and Eastern, red and blue, Republican and Democrat, and in doing so realize, in doing so give voice to the words that were already there, ready to be sung, words that are intergenerational, intercultural, already present, in the human condition among us. What would that look like? What new songbook could we sing such that your song as men, my song as a woman, our song as human beings in community comprised of beautifully diverse traditions? No one is doing this, Wabash graduates. You're going to earn a Nobel Peace Prize for putting your mind to that one. And as you do, I invite you to keep a few things in mind. Be immensely patient in this life. Yours is the first generation in the history of the world that can want a thing, let's say. Go to Amazon.com and order that thing, and then have that thing delivered by a drone all on the very same day. You're used to this marvelous gift of expediency, but be aware, graduates, that relationships and tending to the community well-being Loving someone well, that takes time. Tend to the things that take time, Wabash men. They are usually the stuff of deeply abundant life. Draw deeply from the power of the Holy Spirit given in baptism, sustained by word and sacrament. We need new songs for this unharmonious time. And those songs and that rhythm will be inspired by the Holy Spirit that is at work within you. Pay attention to the Spirit. Seek the Spirit within that is also around and under and through and upon and near us all. Back to the Gospel lesson in Luke 4. Found a few verses beyond what Dr. Hess read today. The crowds are so angry at Jesus for Jesus claiming this as the mission, for Jesus inviting the disciples into this mission, that they want to throw Jesus off the cliff. Jesus deftly navigates his way and move on, but I say that to suggest that no one says this kind of life of caring and tending to the other is going to be easy. But there's a sermon, a song, an assignment in everything we see and in everything we touch. And the assignment still stands from scripture to partner with God and God's mission for the world. The preachers of every generation will bring forth the sermons, but the songs, gentlemen, 
Will your generation bring forth the songs, the literal and the metaphorical songs that bind us together, that give voice to the voiceless? Will you write new melodies that bridge the current chasm and fear in the multicultural diverse communities and listen deeply to find new harmonies for this beautiful but painfully unharmonious world? God's best work is always in front of us, never behind us, and so I delight in how God will work in and through you for God's dream for this world in which you will be the leaders and the shapers of it. And as you do that important work with your lives, don't be a stranger to this place after today. Wabash College is a part of your story, a part of your song. Stay connected to the friends, to the brothers you met here. New harmonies can't be written or created in isolation, nor are they best sung in solitude. We need each other every step of the way for the songs to be created, written, sung, shared. That's the deep, deep beauty of it. And thanks be to God. Amen.
And by way of benediction, friends, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.